Good morning, Gateway Mission Assembly, and good morning, world. Merry Christmas to you. This is a blessed, blessed time of year, a time of spending time together as family, a time of ministry. And I'm really excited this weekend. We're having our Christmas outreach in Antipolo, uh, near Metro Manila, Philippines. And it's going to be a marvelous time. I'm looking forward to hearing the report of the harvest that God is going to bring in. I want to thank all of you guys who gave, and I want to thank also so all of you who have been praying and will continue to pray uh, for the great and mighty harvest at this time. So this, uh, this message is coming to you live stream on Facebook. It will be broadcast other places as well. I'm Pastor Steve McKinney, and I pastor an amazing church in, Phil in the Philippines, in Manila, Philippines, called Gateway Mission Assembly. And uh, I'm coming to you right now from America, and uh, the rest of the service is coming from different locations in the Philippines as well. So uh, anyway, guys, I'm excited to be with you, and I do have a message, and it is a Christmas message uh, that I want to share with you, but it's burning in my heart, and I believe that this is a, a now word for all of us, a very relevant word for all of us. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, I love you. I thank you for your word. I thank you for your presence. I thank you for your power. I thank you for your love. I thank you, Lord, for godly fellowship. I thank you for placing me in such an amazing church family as Gateway Mission Assembly. And I thank you, Lord, for all of the church families that, that I'm relating with and that, that, that I know and that I'm a part of. Lord, your church is so awesome. Your body is so awesome. And Lord, I just thank you that, that you are building your church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, Father, I pray over my words. I pray that I would not add. I pray that I would not subtract anything from what you would want me to say. And Lord, I pray that every person will receive the specific message that you have for them. And they will not only be hearers of the word, but they would be doers of the word. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody says, Amen. All right, guys, go ahead and turn with me to the book of Luke, chapter 1. And uh, we're going to pick it up uh, here at verse 39, Luke 1, 39. And it says this, and I'm reading from the NLT, a few days later... A few days after what? When Mary found out that she was going to be the mother of the Messiah. Okay, when she got the information and she was wondering, how in the world can this happen? Because I've never been with a man. Uh, you know, and 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 she was, she was bewildered, but she also was excited. Uh, she knew that she was going to be facing some scandalous times, uh, some, some gossiping from people and things like that. And she didn't know how things were going to work out with Joseph, uh, but she knew that she wanted to be used by God. And so it says here, a few days later, Mary hurried to the hill country of Judea, to the town where Zechariah lived. She entered the house and greeted Elizabeth. And at the sound of Mary's greeting, Elizabeth's child leaped within her. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Verse 42, Elizabeth gave a glad cry and exclaimed to Mary, God has blessed you above all women, and your child is blessed. I'm going to stop there for a minute, and we'll go on in, in just a moment. But guys, I, I want you to know <clears throat> that, that this statement that Elizabeth told Mary is the statement that's inspiring me right now to share this message with you. And the statement is this, God has blessed you above all women and your child is blessed. Now, she had not even heard the story yet. Uh, she did not even know that, that Mary had been visited uh, by the angels telling her that she would be the mother of the Messiah. She, she had no idea. And, and she was literally prophesying at this point. Why was she prophesying? Because she was filled with the Holy Spirit. And this is before the baptism of the Holy Spirit was even available, okay? This is really an awesome thing, a quite unusual thing in Old Testament times. Uh, you know, of course, we're in the New Testament now in the book of Luke, but it was still unusual until the Holy Spirit was poured out on the day of Pentecost that anything like this would happen. Uh, although the Holy Spirit is evident all throughout the Bible. So it's it's amazing. Y you know, uh, she, she, she sensed 
She sensed that something was going on because as soon as Mary's voice was heard, her baby, and she was six months pregnant, Mary was just a few days pregnant, uh, she was just six months pregnant, her, her baby leapt inside of her. And when that baby responded to the voice of Mary, that is when Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and began to prophesy saying, blessed are you among all women. Now, let me ask you a question. Was Elizabeth, the cousin of Mary, the, the wife of Zechariah the priest, was she blessed? Yes, her son would be incredible as well. A mighty vessel of the Lord. As a matter of fact, Jesus said that her son was the greatest of all the prophets that ever were. His name is John the Baptist. Okay, so she's blessed also and her son is blessed also. Uh, and of course, you know, her son would, would suffer death. Uh, at the hands of his adversaries, just as Jesus would also suffer death, but then be resurrected three days later. Okay, and so, you know, it, it was definitely a, a hard thing to have incredible men of God uh, born into the family. But guys, I want you to understand, okay, uh, <clears throat> Mary is blessed above all women. Okay. However, she is an example to us. Uh, she is a role model for us. And by the way, Elizabeth is a pretty good role model as well. Okay. But Mary is a role model to us. And Mary literally had the baby Jesus growing inside of her. She was given an opportunity that in literal ways you and I will never have. Okay. Jesus only was born once physically born once, but I want you guys to understand, Jesus, if you know him, if you've received him into your life, if you surrendered your life to him, Jesus lives inside of you. And I want you to know it changes you. It changes everything about you. In the case of Mary, even her voice, even her voice, Elizabeth was able to, 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 to pick up and perceive, and the baby, John the Baptist, was, was able to pick up and perceive that this was the woman who was carrying Jesus. And I want you to know something, friend. If you want to be blessed, then you need to live your life like Mary, okay? Now, how can you live your life like Mary? Guys, I believe that it is the responsibility and it is the privilege of every born-again believer to be spiritually pregnant, Amen. I'm going to say that again. I believe that it is a blessing and it is a privilege and it is a responsibility that every believer, every Christian live their life spiritually pregnant. Amen. What does that mean, guys? You carry around inside of you the presence of Jesus Christ. You carry around inside of you the power of the Holy Spirit. And you live your life differently because you are carrying the presence of Jesus inside of you. Amen. Now, what are you pregnant with? Jesus himself? No, he's already been born. He's already in heaven. He's standing at the right hand of the Father. Okay. Uh, but he lives inside of us as well because God is omnipresent. But there is something that Jesus wants to bring through your life to this world. There is something that Jesus wants to birth into this world through you. And for some of you ladies, it is literally a, a kid that's going to be a man or a woman of God. But it's something else as well. There are ministries that are going to come from you. There, there are... There, there, there <coughs> There are resources that are going to come from you. There, there, there are creative ideas that are going to come from you. There's all kinds of things that are designed to flow through you that are going to bless this world and bless the church, bless your family. You've been destined to be a blessing. And guys, one of the things that the enemy always does is he tries to, to abort the things of God. He always tries to 
kill the, the infants of God and the toddlers of God. Look, he, he tried to kill J Jesus through Herod, uh, you know, when Jesus wasn't even two years old yet, just as the Pharaoh tried to kill, uh, you know, Moses. <clears throat> uh, even even before the age of two. All right, guys, the enemy is always trying to abort. The enemy is always trying to end. The enemy is always trying to block. But God wants you to live your life in a way where you are emulating the example of Mary. You live like a pregnant person. Now, what does that mean, guys? You know, a, a pregnant lady is always aware that there is something special inside of her. And with that awareness comes care. Now, I'm not saying that every lady is like this, but they all should be, okay? In other words, they should be careful what they eat. They should be careful what they touch. They should be careful to get enough rest. They should be careful as to how they get their entertainment. They should be careful to be in proper relationships. They need to be living a healthy life, both emotionally and physically. Amen. Guys, when you're pregnant, you live more carefully. And let me ask you a question. Are there some things that pregnant ladies cannot do? Yes, there are. And if you want to be blessed and if you want to be highly favored, are there some things that you cannot do? Yes, and there are things that are dangerous not only to you, but to what is inside of you. Everything that is against God's word is a danger to your destiny. Everything that is against God's word is a danger to what you are supposed to be birthing through your life into this world. Amen. Guys, I, I want you to be favored like Mary. I want you to be blessed like Mary. I want you to be a blessed believer. Amen. And I want you to be the kind of person that the Holy Spirit in other people recognizes the destiny on your life, recognizes the favor on your life, recognizes the blessing on your life. Guys, we have been called to be set apart. We've been called to be anointed. Amen. And you know what, guys? A lot of people think that anointing is just power to do something. It's not just that. Guys, anointed means consecrated. It means you are set apart. It means you live your life carefully. It means that you live your life purposefully. It means that you live your life intelligently according to the leading and the guiding of the Holy Spirit, according to the counsel of God's Word. And so guys, this Christmas season, and I'm not preaching very long today because I, I know that we're in the holiday season, but this Christmas season, I would like you to consecrate yourself. Imagine yourself as pregnant with the purposes of God, pregnant with the things of God. I want you to, to set yourself apart to carry destiny inside of you, to carry future blessing inside of you, and to live your life in a way where there will not be abortion, there will not be uh, pre-pregnancy uh, pre termination, there, there will not be a stillbirth, okay? You're going to live your life in a way where God can birth his purposes and his plans in and through your life. Can I get a good amen on that? You know, guys, Mary said to the angel, how can it be? How can it be that, that I'm going to be the one to birth the Messiah? And, you know, of course, it was explained to her, well, you know what, even though it's not humanly possible that you could be pregnant, the Holy Spirit will make you pregnant. Even though you can't possibly deserve to be the one, God has chosen you. And I want you guys to know, in the natural, you know, me, you, we don't deserve anything. Me, you, it's impossible that God would, would use us to do the big and the great things that he wants to use us for. But with the power of the Holy Spirit and with the destiny that God has placed on our lives, with the sovereignty of God flowing in us and flowing through us, I want you to know God in his wisdom, God in his timing, God in his plan, even though it doesn't make sense, 
He has chosen you and he has chosen me to birth great and mighty things. So let's pick it up again. Luke chapter 1, verse 42 again. Elizabeth gave a glad cry and exclaimed to Mary, God has blessed you above all women and your child is blessed. Why am I so honored that the mother of my Lord should visit me? When I heard your greeting, the baby in my womb jumped for joy. You are blessed, and I want you to catch this. You are blessed because you believed that the Lord would do what he said. Guys, she was blessed, why? Because she believed the report of the Lord. She believed what the angels told her. And guys, I'm sitting here right now telling you that there is a great plan for your life. There is a great destiny for your life. And you need to rise up in faith. And you need to rise up in, in, in response to God's word. And you need to say with me, I'm pregnant with the things of God. I'm full of destiny. I'm full of promise. God has a plan for me. God is going to use me. God will never fail me. God will never let me down. God has chosen to use me to bring forth great and mighty things into this earth, into this world, into the lives of other people. I just see it in my mind's eye right now, guys. So many people are going to be blessed because of your faith, because of your faithfulness, because you respond to God. And you will be blessed if you will believe that God has a great and mighty plan for you. Now, Mary goes ahead and responds in verse 46. And this is one of the most famous songs in the Bible. It's called Mary's Song of Praise. So she responds, and I don't know if she was singing or if it was just the lyrics, okay? She probably sang. She was probably musical. She was filled with, with Jesus. She was filled with the Holy Spirit. And she says, oh, how my soul praises the Lord. How my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he took notice of his lowly servant girl. And from now on, all generations will call me blessed. Wow, guys, when you praise the Lord, do you praise this way? Because she's our example for praise and worship as well. Guys, I am nothing. I don't deserve anything. But just like God chose Mary, God has chosen me for a specific purpose. God has chosen you for a specific purpose. I praise the Lord for choosing me. I praise the Lord for placing his finger upon me. You should be praising the Lord the same. Because even though you you don't deserve it. God has chosen to use you. Verse 49, for the mighty one is holy. He has done great things for me. Hasn't he done great things for you? A lot of people I'm talking to right now, you should be dead. <laughs> Amen. You should, you should be you know, living on the street or something like that. But the favor of God, the hand of God, he has taken good care of you. He shows mercy from generation to generation to all who fear him. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Verse 51, his mighty arm has done tremendous things. He has scattered the proud and the haughty ones. Wow, he does that regularly. He has brought down princes from their thrones and exalted the humble. He has exalted the humble. Stay humble, my friends. He has filled the hungry with good things. What did Jesus say? Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. And he has sent the rich away with empty hands. He has helped his servant Israel and remembered to be merciful. For he made his this promise to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. And it says here that Mary stayed with Elizabeth about three months, and she went back to her own town. Isn't that awesome? That's one of that's one of the stories uh, from the Christmas season, guys, and it's it's amazing. Mary's song is amazing. I pray that we will take this scripture to heart, and we will uh, be aware. We will be careful with what is inside of us, and we will uh, live our lives like Mary did like we're pregnant with the things of God. And we will worship the way that Mary worshiped 
thanking God that he has chosen us even in our humble and lowly positions. Isn't that awesome, guys? I have this sense that we are coming into a new fantastic year. I have this sense for our church. I have a sense for every one of the families that are watching with us here. I have a sense for all of you that, that you know, we're together in spirit, although we're in different countries. Uh, I have a sense that, that we are in for amazing things. And I believe with all my heart, I believe with everything that is within me, that God in his sovereignty. He is making us full of himself. He's making us pregnant with his purposes. And guys, I want you to know there's going to be big surprises. There's going to be big opportunities. There's going to be really, really blessed open doors coming your way and coming our way. It's going to be an amazing year, but you have to rise up, rise up in expectation, rise up in carefulness. Rise up being careful how you live. Be holy for he is holy. Be righteous. Put on the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Live your life carefully because you are destined to bring forth great things for him. Oh, I love you guys. I'm so proud of you. I believe with all my heart I believe with all my heart that this is a time of pregnancy. And as a matter of fact, even right now as I'm getting ready to pray, I just really sense that, that the Holy Spirit is literally going to, in a spiritual way, impregnate us right now with dreams and with visions and with purposes and, and with expectation. This is going to be an amazing time of prayer. And I invite you right now, wherever you are, to just lift up your hands to the Lord as a sign of surrender. Lord, you see the yieldedness. You see the willingness in every single person responding to you right now. Lord, you see that there are people who are willing to live their lives carefully. There are people who are willing to live their lives in faith, believing that you will use them for great and mighty things. Father, I pray right now that you would move by your Holy Spirit the same way that you move by the Holy Spirit in Mary, and you would literally impregnate us with dreams, impregnate us with vision, impregnate us, Lord, with purpose. Lord, give us direction, Lord. Give us, give us a sense of responsibility. Give us a sense, Lord, uh, that, that we need to be careful and live carefully, Lord. I pray that your Holy Spirit would fill us and energize us and empower us. And Lord, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, that we would Always remember that we are blessed so that we can be a blessing. We are blessed and favored so that other people can receive blessing and favor and miracles and signs and wonders through our lives. Lord, I pray that this time of, of Christmas is a time of fresh anointing. And I pray, Lord, that that anointing would translate into signs, wonders, and miracles of all kinds. But Lord, I also thank you that the anointing is consecration. So Lord, we end our prayer by worshiping you. We thank you. We thank you. We love you. We honor you. We worship you. That you are the God that supplies all of our needs according to the riches and glory that are available in Christ Jesus. We thank you for health. We thank you for life. We thank you for the protection that is on our lives. We thank you for family. We thank you for our marriages. We thank you for our children. We thank you for our relatives, Lord. Lord, bless our families. We ask you to place a hedge of protection around our families. And Lord, if there's anyone among us that is in need, I pray, Lord, that you would do miracles in the finances, miracles in the health, miracles, Lord, in, in, in debt forgiveness, miracles, Lord, in new opportunities, miracles, Lord, in provision. 
And if anybody needs money for medicine or transportation or education costs, Lord, I pray that you would surprise them with a miracle in their life. And Lord, I also pray in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, that this time of, of the holiday season, I pray, Lord, that it would be a time of reconciliation. Lord, I just pray for, for restored relationships, Lord. I, I pray that a miracle would happen in relationships this season. Father, I bless Gateway Mission Assembly and I bless every other person connected with us, uh, whether regularly or even just occasionally. I bless their lives. I place a hedge of protection around them all for your glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Merry Christmas, guys. Thank you so much for joining me and for joining us. I love you so much. And if you have any prayer requests or if you need counsel or advice, please feel free to contact me. And guys, uh, it's not too late to give to the Christmas outreach. Um, we can still use some more funds. And don't forget to pray. God bless you guys. Bye.